If you're shooting outdoors and you don't have the correct lighting or the right type of equipment and you're trying to expose for your talent or your subject, it could result in an overexposed or blown out sky. Hushlessville coming, I'm Hayden and this is Cinematography. I'm gonna show you how you can change the sky to anything, animate within it, or just change the entire look of the shot completely inside DaVinci Resolve. Oh yeah, this is in the free version of DaVinci Resolve also. Here in our first shot we have a guy walking and obviously the sky is just gone. The first thing we need to do is key out the sky, come over into your qualifier. And while we could just qualify the sky, there is an easier way to do this. If you click this 3D icon, now we're inside the 3D qualifier. Make sure you have the picker add selected and just select along the sky. And if you get something that you don't want, you can hit the minus and get rid of that. Just like that. Now comes the fun part. Come up to the effects and search for sky, sky replacement, drag and drop that right here on this line. Now we need to connect the alpha channel, which is going to take what we have keyed out and put it onto there. And boom. So all we have to do is open up artificial sky and turn up the opacity. And we can add some clouds as well. And there's a sky. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but we can finesse it a little bit more by coming to our sky mask adjustments. We'll take the shift edge and minimize that. And take the refine and pump that up a bit just to feather it. And it looks pretty dang good. This is just the basic look. We can actually go a step further, come over here to the sky color and adjust it. Let's make it more like it's sunset evening time. It's a little bit of purple, the horizon. Let's get that a little bit more golden looking. And then our clouds, we'll turn, tone down the brightness of them and then make them a little bit more purple. Doesn't really look like it fits. What we can do is adjust the foreground. Inside the sky replacement, if we scroll down, we can see foreground appearance. Check that on. And now we can adjust the brightness and the temperature and our tint. Now it's starting to look like it belongs more in the scene. While you can make your own artificial sky, if you already have an existing image that you would like to use, you can do that as well. In this example, I've already keyed out the sky and to add the image that we want, we're gonna come up to the media pool and drag and drop our image of the sky and take our green output and connect to our green input. And bam, we have our image, but it's not lined up. To fix that, we can just go to our sky position, adjust size, scale this up, and the position, just adjust it up a little bit here on the horizon. Something like that, not bad. Like the other one, we can make some tweaks to the foreground, make it look a little bit better. Not only that, we can come up to the source sky appearance and adjust that as well, just to match it a little bit more uniformly. And one other thing I wanna do is add just a little bit of blur. It looks just a little too crispy in the sky versus the trees. So to do that, we can come to our sky integration and move the lens a defocus up just a tad. I won't do too much because if you go up too much, it's gonna be completely blurred. Somewhere around there. The first thing you'll notice is that it's just sitting there. It's not actually moving around in the scenery. So to change that, we can track. Under sky position and match move, we have a drop down. We have keyframe only. I do not recommend using this unless if you wanna spend a lot of time going frame by frame. There's track foreground, which is great because it just tracks the foreground. I don't recommend doing this if you have a video where someone's walking through the frame or there's a car driving by that takes up a lot of the frame because the sky is going to try to be tracked onto the movement of that. You also have track original sky. This one's awesome, but the image in the existing sky does need to have some clouds that have some good contrast in there. So it actually has things to track onto. For this example, I'm gonna use the FX tracker. And this is the one that I like to use the most with difficult shots. So I'll just select that and we'll come over to our tracker, which is located here. And you wanna make sure you have the FX tracker selected. Go to this drop down and 
click Open FX Overlay to add our tracking points. We'll just click this button here and you'll see a blue cross pop up. When you're tracking things for the sky, it's important to remember that the sky will move slower or things further away from the camera are going to move slower than anything in the foreground or things closer to the camera. So I'm going to be tracking some objects that are further away that's closer to the sky itself. I'm gonna do that on these treetops. So maybe like this one, and I'm gonna add another tracking point just to be safe. The more tracking points you add, the better it can be. Just having a couple is going to be good enough. And it's important to remember to use the correct type of tracking for your shot. For this one, I'm using pan, tilt, and perspective 3D. If the camera is moving around a lot more, I probably would use the zoom or the rotation. So just keep that in mind. And we'll hit track forward. It tracked it pretty decently, especially at the end there. One thing you'll see is that over here on the right, it kind of looks a little chattery, a little jittery. There's a couple things we can do. There is a big light source coming from that direction. So I'm just gonna, I, I know that the image has a little bit of a sun there or a bright spot, but I'm gonna go ahead and just add my own. And you can do that with this hot spot. You can adjust the brightness of it and the position. So I'm gonna put the like right over here and just maximize that. So it just looks like it's blown out in this area. Like the sun is just over here blinding this area just to kind of make up for the not so good keyed out leaves. Not every clip is going to work great for sky replacement. With this one, for example, we have a lot of issues going on with it. And yeah, I didn't spend a ton of time on it, but if you notice, the sky is matching the color of a lot of other things going on in the frame, like the van and the water. So if I turn this back on, I did try tracking to this table just to get a rotation. One, that didn't work great at all. I also tried adding a mask, if we come over to here, of a, a gradient to get rid of the water reflection. And that didn't work great either because if, if I just turned this off, you can see how bad it is. So I did that to kind of save the image. You could go a step further and just mask out every little item, but then you have more things like her glass, his hat, and there's just so many things that are of similar color luminance contrast, all that will just make shots a whole lot harder for using the sky replacement. Just keep that in mind that you can't fix every single shot with sky replacement. One of the other amazing things you can do is change the entire look of a shot using sky replacement. So this is before and this is after. Just using everything that I showed you inside the sky replacement tool. It just looks almost like a cool sci-fi shot. We can also go a step further and add on other effects. Using the same example clip I just showed you, we're gonna do something totally different with it and animate the sky within it. So I already have the sky made up, it's Compton and everything. And what we're gonna do is animate the clouds. Everything inside this you can keyframe to animate. So it's not limited to just clouds, it's only limited by your imagination. The beginning of the clip, I'm gonna come over to cloud time and I'm gonna move it just all the way down to zero. And I'll go to the end of the clip and we'll just go to like 0.3. Yeah, we just animated a sky. You can go even further, stack on more effects, like right here is light rays. And now we have animated light rays from a fake sun that's in our fake sky on this image. And just like that, you've leveled up your editing skills with sky replacement. Leave a like if you found value in this, and if you're hungry for more editing videos, check out this video popping up right here. Until next time, off we